Now, <clears throat> on the issue of own source revenue, when I came in, uh, the county government used to collect about 1.2 billion shillings. We have really developed a system that has addressed most of the issues that were there. And right now, we have about 3.1 billion shillings we are collecting for the, last, um, for the last one year that I've been in office. Uh, this year has not yet ended. Uh, we'll see how it will look like. But uh, the numbers are not bad, again, um, because of the measures that we have put in place to close in on the loopholes that we used to have. Also, uh, we have increased the pack fee. Um, it used to be about $80 to enter Masai Mara. But because, again, uh, when we came in, we realized that um, there was a need to increase so that we can manage that ecosystem. Managing Masai Mara is very expensive. And therefore, we agreed with the Ministry of Tourism that some of this pack, we need to increase the pack fee from $80 to $100. And uh, during, that is low season. And during high season, we increase from um, $100 to $200. And we are yet to see, because it's just started this year, whether the numbers will uh, increase. But I'm happy to uh, say that uh, we are doing the best we can. It's never easy, but uh, we are doing the best we can. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Governor. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, there is something that you asked about the issue of recurrent and uh, development. I, I, it was not answered by Governor. But uh, I would want to say that uh, it's always good to uh, adhere to the uh, statutory instruments in terms of uh, service delivery, that is the, the percentage for the recurrent is uh, by the PFM Act and the, 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 the percentage that is meant for development, say that it can uh, 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 put us into a uh, uh, good position as a county or be in good records. Uh, Honorable Ledam always is fighting for uh, increment of the resources to the, the, the county government, but the, the, the only thing that can give him strength is when the money is used prudently. Uh, what I would ask is, uh, as they are also giving us documents, please let him include any, uh, let, let, let you include any, I know you've engaged the youth and women in many forums, so if you have any kind of pictorials, uh, documents and uh, in seminars and all that, please include them in the document so that at least uh, when we say that uh, you've uh, included the youth and uh, women in your government, it will be seen. Because I've noted with concern as the president of women in this broad based that you have taken care of women. I hope they are not tea girls and messengers. They are in uh, high positions also in your executive. Please keep it up. I only request you to do the right thing. Secondly, kindly, as my colleague has requested, if you have engaged the youth, let's have those photos of sessions where you have engaged them and also the women. First of all, let me appreciate the work the committee is doing. I've been in the Senate for seven years, and the last committee on cohesion never did such work. And I think maybe this is as a result of the Senate resolution. When I walked in here, I was given a paper by the committee to note. And Governor, when these guys retreat, these distinguished men and women retreat to write their report, there are a few things that, now that you're given seven days, that I'd like you to respond to. One of the questions that I've been asked here, and I don't know whether it came out clearly because of the times, has to do is that what specific steps is Narrow County taking in? to increase participation of youth, women, and PWD in, in the county procurement process. The second question was, does Narrow County have any programs in place to build capacity among youth, women, and PWD businesses to help them better access procurement opportunities? And what challenges has any? And these questions lead to, when you read these questions, they can actually deduce what will come out of their report in terms of their reporting to the Senate. I'd like your team, and particularly your procurement team, to be able to uh, visit the Treasury website and put together a paper for you in regards to AGPO. Mm -hmm. And AGPO, it's a program which is funded by the National Treasury, and it's, it's essentially access to government procurement opportunities. This is for the PWD, the youth and women. These are requirements. I need you to pay attention to Regulation 2013, Section 3, 6, and 32, 
and so need you to pay attention to the Act itself, Section 3 and Section 7. And you can then respond to those questions. If at all there isn't anything that you're doing to ensure that this PWD and the youth and women are applying to this program, I think you need to have a session. Uh, and this goes to what my sister uh, Montet was alluding to, with the youth and tell them that they can apply to be registered as AGPO. And once they're registered and they've gotten their certification with AGPO, then they can be able to participate in the procurement of the county. But this matter will keep on cropping in. I think um, this was not a matter sui generis uh, from the committee, but rather a resolution of the Senate. So I think it's imperative that you take those steps from my advisory point of view, so that we can be able to correct anything that is out there. And finally, in terms of the documentation, um, let me reiterate again what the uh, chair has said. Uh, it will be important for you to demystify this 55 to 72 year um, employed uh, staff. And also the second part is the issue of disability. And maybe address that issue of the 5% that has been raised by my colleague, Senator Kamau. Otherwise, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Governor, there is something of a concern here, the issue of procurement. And this is uh, in your county and also Samburu County we noticed yesterday. This issue is most counties have uh, given contracts up to 30%. I'll give you an example of uh, the county uh, Transoya. They have given over 30 percent because of the Nawiri fund. So uh, I understand what you are saying because of uh, the issue of uh, people, many people living in the rural areas. I also come from Marsbit. We have the same issues. But uh, if you sensitize youth, women, and people with disability, and then you have a fund, and and these are our children. These are our people who are living with disability, and also women. So. If you can manage to, you know, in 2023-24, there was zero uh, people with disability, and that is really not right. So again, you are at 12%, 14%, you know, it is the lowest we've seen. So please uh, make sure that uh, you work on those areas. I think uh, moving forward, you need to have uh, your people visiting some counties, see what they're doing. I mean, they might be doing bad things or good. You can borrow something from there. And they can also borrow some from you. You understand? So that is why we are here telling you which are the good counties. We had the county of Garissa before us. The, the documents were not good, but we told them to go and prepare. Because we are going to report back. As a Senate, our job and responsibility is to support the counties. If you look at uh, the last time we had a mediation, Governor, we negotiated, I was in that mediation, we negotiated 400 billion for you. But unfortunately, Gen Z brought some issues and then it was rejected. But we negotiated for you. When we negotiate for you, we negotiate in good faith. You also, when you are doing your work, do it in good faith. Because, you know, uh, your senator is always fighting for the counties, more than even us on the UDA side. Uh, you know, and we are supporting them occasionally. <laughs> so, because they are now in our Nini, uh, in our broad based. So I couldn't opposition, sir, sir. So, so the issue of opposition. Can you please don't raise that? Kindly take the floor, sir. Yes, okay. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind uh, you bringing my governor. I mean, my senator to um, to the broad-based government. But um, nevertheless, I'm not in. Don't lie. I'm not in. All right. Thank you. It's not as bad as uh, Bauriago. Um, now. Um, so um, let me begin by saying, uh, Senator Beth Klunda, I think you have seen when you look at um, my team, composition. the composition, the two beautiful uh, ladies you see there is a CC in charge of HR. So if there's any problem with HR, it's her. And then number two, that's my vice chair of the Public Service Board. And on the left, look at the two young men with the ties, they are youth. So again, we are doing the best we can. Even uh, uh, my county secretary, it's only me who is over 47 years old. Otherwise, all these guys are, um, <laughs> I have gained a lot by, you know, just engaging with you. I've heard what other counties are doing. And I, I'm always, uh, I 
I will endeavor to make sure that I rectify uh, where, I need, uh, where there is any issues. But I can tell you that we are doing the best we can. As a county government, um, I know for the last uh, you know, 12 years since devolution, uh, things were slow. But I think going forward, we are catching up as the governors and the Senate. We will always continue to ask you to fight for us. Because without you fighting for us, nobody else. Because if you take us to the other house, and myself and uh, you know the Senate of um, uh, Trukana was, uh, they are not normally they are not they are not very good when it comes to the uh, devolution. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, maybe what I can ask you, um, Senator, the issues that have been raised by the senators, if I can get it in writing, so that I can go one by one, so that in the next one week I can provide these uh, uh, the issues that we have them. Maybe just a matter of working on the numbers. Um, the other issue, uh, and I totally agree with uh, um, my senator of Narok, is that uh, our youth are still a little bit uh, behind when it comes to ACPO and um, you know uh, what needs to be done. But I hear you. Uh, I think we, we, we need to do something. I will also maybe in due course uh, invite you. We have a very big uh, meeting that is coming up of the youth in Arab, and basically engaging them, talking to them, and telling them that what they can do. And I will be pretty much um, ready and will write it to you, I will invite you, so that again, that these are some of the issues that they are bringing out, and we should listen to them. They are our children, and you know what they are saying, you are not listening. So why don't we just listen to them? Probably we learn something that we don't. And it's our children. This uh, uprising, don't take it for just like that. Let's listen to our children. And personally, as the governor of Naro, I have taken initiative to listen. That's why when they came up with the policy, the youth policy, it's now in the county assembly, and we should be finishing it up so that we address the issue that you, uh, you have said. Finally, uh, Senator, um, I also want probably, I will want to see the document from my good friend uh, from Isen McQueen. Or, uh, yeah, uh, okay. Transway and McQueen. Good. I will, I will engage them and maybe learn one or two things. We will continue learning. I don't think uh, learning will end anywhere, you know. 